Should you be using this thing to copy your images to the computer after you shot them? I think there's a better way and I'm going to tell you all about it on today's episode of... Ask David Bergman! Hey there everybody, welcome back. Here I am, as always, answering your photography questions right here on Adorama TV. Don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com. Ask your own photo questions there. If it's something I think is going to be useful for a lot of photographers, then I will answer it right here on a future show. I'm also doing one-on-one -on -one workshops. You'll see that on Ask David Bergman as well. I can work with you directly to answer your specific photography questions and help bring your career to the next level. Also, I hope you're already a subscriber to the Adorama YouTube channel. If not, why the heck not? Go ahead and click that button down below. You can subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notifications of all the new photo content for myself and a bunch of other great photo hosts here from Adorama. All right, today's question comes in from Mark H. And he wants to know, my question is about transferring my pictures to the computer. Is it better to connect the camera to the computer directly or should I put the memory card in a separate card reader? I've seen conflicting information online and would like to know what method you use and why. All right, so after you've shot the images on your camera, you're going to want to get those into your computer, right? So. You probably know this already. Inside the camera, there's a little memory card. This is the Canon EOS 1DX Mark III. The type of card it uses is the latest and greatest CF Express. It's a super fast new format. Um, the, com the camera you have might have CF Express. It might have very common format SD, stands for secure digital. It might have CF cards, which we use for many years in the pro cameras. That stands for compact flash. Those uh, kinds of cards are all what we call flash memory, where it's not very volatile. They're, they're uh, pretty secure as far as, you know, if you drop it or something, it's not going to damage them. Uh, I wouldn't recommend throwing them around the room, but you're probably going to be okay. Back in the old days, I remember shooting with a, a micro drive, an IBM micro drive, which actually had a little spinning hard drive inside of it. So you needed to be real careful with those. We've come a long way from that. However, it still stands to reason that what those cards are for is it's really temporary storage of your pictures. I've actually heard stories and this I can't believe this, but I've heard stories of people who've told me that they shoot on the memory card until it's full and then they just throw it in a box and then they buy a new memory card and start shooting with that. Don't do that. You really want to copy your images to your computer where you can edit them, you can work on them, and you can reuse those cards, right? Hard drives, uh, you know, computer hard drives are cheaper, generally speaking, than the memory cards are. So it's not really the best way to archive your images, but that's a different story. Um, however, getting them to your uh, computer, there are different ways to do it. Now, when you started out, you might have been told, just hook your computer directly up to the computer and you have to use a USB cable. Here's one, right? You have to get the right cable for your camera. Now this works, but there's a couple of caveats. First of all, uh, I've found in my experience when I try to hook the camera up to the computer directly, uh, in a perfect world, it just mounts your card as a hard drive, right? It just pops up on your computer like any other hard drive. But I've found that can be a little wonky. You might need to install drivers. You might have to change the setting on your uh, camera so that the computer sees it. Some companies make you install software. Canon actually has the EOS utility that you have to install, at least on the Mac, so that you can see those images. It's really not the simplest thing in the world. So that's one thing. Also, physically, I think it's a little awkward to actually hook the camera up. So first of all, you've got to, underneath one of these ports here, you've got to find the right uh, slot. There it is. And then you, when you hook this up to the computer, these cords, depending on how long this is, right? You really don't want to touch any of this. The The camera might be perched on the edge of your desk. I know it's not a big deal, but I, I don't like having a very expensive camera right there on the edge of the desk. I'd rather put it away in its case when I'm when I'm done. But um, but that's one reason. Also, this cord, if it just pulls ever so slightly out of the computer, especially while you're copying images, you could have image corruption. You could actually lose photos and maybe not be able to get them back. So you really don't want to touch anything while the copy process process is going on. So I wouldn't work on my computer or do anything while that's happening. Just kind of stay back away. Also, <clears throat> that uses your camera's battery while you're doing that. Um, and I prefer to take the battery out and recharge it while I'm doing my editing. So I'd much rather put the camera away. Um, if that battery dies, if you do use it and it dies while you're copying, again, you might have some corruption. Even the camera manuals from the manufacturers often say, if you're going to do this, use the AC adapter, the optional AC adapter, which I know very few people that have one. I use one to shoot these videos because I don't want to have to worry about recharging that camera. But um, 
but other than that, most people don't have the AC adapters and they're not inexpensive. So uh, I don't think this is really the best way to go. The, better, the best way, in my opinion, is to use a separate card reader. Now, some computers have built-in card readers, which is a nice feature. It may only be SD or micro SD, and if your card shoots one, of, if your camera shoots one of those, then great, go ahead and use it. Um, they're not the highest quality usually, and they're a little slow, but if you've got it built in, that's fine, go ahead and use it. But in my experience, I like to use external readers. Why is that? Whether you're using the one in the computer or the external reader as opposed to the camera, um, I've found that I've had no mounting issues, no issues with the uh, card mounting on the computer, and it just appears like any other hard drive. There may be some outlying cases where you have to install drivers, but I have not found that, especially on the Mac. It just works when you plug it in. Um, the other thing is, like I said, new uh, card formats come out all the time. And if you have just the built-in, then and a new card format comes out and you buy a new camera that doesn't use SD or whatever you have built in, then what are you going to do, right? So... I'm only going to buy a new computer every, what, four, five, six years, but a card reader, I can get a new card reader very, very easily. So that's something that, to think about if you have a new camera with a new card that you can't use that internal card reader. Also, the main reason I use an external card reader, speed. These things are generally so much faster, exponentially faster than using the camera or even the internal card reader if you have one. If you've got thousands of pictures, it could make a huge, huge difference. And time is money, right? So I don't want to sit here and wait while those images copy over. Also, if you have multiple cards, say you're a wedding photographer or concert, sports, whatever, and you shoot multiple cameras and you have multiple cards, you can actually use two or three or four of these and hook them all in at the same time and then copy them all at once, which saves a huge amount of time just to let those go and not have to worry about swapping them out, right? Now, something to know, not all card readers are built the same. Just like memory cards, which by the way, may be a different video if somebody asks about cards. Um, they're all different, right? They're different speeds. Some are made of higher quality parts. They all have software and firmware that vary in quality. So um, I would say get a brand that you know, that you trust. Um, I'm going to recommend one in a minute, but you generally want to get the fastest one that you can, right? I know standards can be confusing. USB 3, USB C, Thunderbolt, um, it, gets confu it gets very, very confusing. But if you have if you've invested in really fast cards, but then you buy a slow reader, it's going to slow down your transfer speed. doesn't matter how fast your card is if your reader can't keep up. Now, the ones that I use are these from Pro Grade Digital. The thing is, they cater to the pro market. So they only make really high quality pro level cards and readers. I love their cards and their readers. The cool thing is they're magnetic. So if you have multiples, you can stick them together like that. And they also send you when you in the box, there's a little metal plate. This is my case, by the way. That's why it's in such bad shape. But there's a little metal plate right here that you can actually stick the card reader onto when you're working. So you can just put cards in that way. So that's kind of a nice little feature. But these things are really well made. They're the fastest ones I've ever used. You can Google the speed tests and see by far they're USB-C native. So you go right into the computer, no problem. I'll put links down below if you're interested in that. But whatever you get, whatever you use, I recommend getting an external reader. The direct connection from the camera certainly works in a pinch. I would keep a USB cable, the proper USB cable for your connection in your bag just as a backup. But really the best way for my money is to get a quality external reader. They're the fastest, uh, fastest way to go. They're safe, secure, and really, really easy to use. So, and honestly, they're not that expensive. So I would definitely invest in one or two of these. Uh, Mark, I hope that answers your question. I know there's a lot of conflicting information out there, but that's, I've been using external readers my whole professional career and have never had any major problems. So thanks for asking that question. What do you guys think? Comment below. Let me know what you think. How are you How are you copying your images over? Do you use a card reader? Uh, am I crazy? Are you using the camera? You think that's the best way? Let's get into it down below. Again, don't forget to go to AskDavidBergman.com. There's a new show here every Monday on Adorama TV, 10 a.m. Eastern. So I hope you'll come back next week. Also watch all the other great shows from all the other photo hosts here on Adorama TV. I'll see you back here next time. Thanks for joining me on Ask David Bergman.